Okay, project 4B. So again, some things I want to point out. Again, it says this is a group project, but I am not making you do it as a group. I will not be putting you into groups. If you know someone in the in the class and you want to work with them, that is okay. Just let me know who you're working with and you both need to submit a copy of the assignment. Okay, so don't just one of you submit it or you won't be able to put it in the gradebook. So if you're working with someone, um, that is okay. Just make sure you let me know and that you both submit a copy of the assignment. Again, I will not be putting you into groups. You don't have to be in a group to do this project. You can do it completely on your own. And again, I will not be placing you in groups. So just go ahead and do it on your own. Or if you want to work with a friend that you know in the class, that's fine too. Um, what are you going to use for this? You will use the product you invented for Project 3B. So here's a reminder of what mine looked like. In Project 3B, what you were supposed to do was create a product, give it a name, okay, give it a like a slogan, and then give at least five things that it has. So mine were that it was taste delicious, it was from all natural ingredients, it had at least eight grams of fiber, the fruit filling had the recommended amount of vitamin C for the day. It's a compact no mess bar for great for families on the go. So this was mine. Whatever you created was fine, but again, you just had to come up with a healthy snack and give it five things that it does. So that was for project 3B. On project 4B, we're taking this a step further. You're going to survey people to see if they would buy your product. Okay. So here is what step one. Step one of project 4B is you and your business partner or just you if you're doing this on your own make a survey and ask questions about the product that you created okay create at least five questions so here they give you some things you might do to create questions you might ask them how many times a month they eat that kind of product ask them would they buy it if it had the features that you were putting into it um, ask them what they think a good selling price is should it have sugar or not? Should the number of calories be on the package? What flavors would they like? Would they buy it in a mall? Would they buy it in a grocery store? Would they buy it in a candy machine? You only have to come up with five questions. These are just suggestions of questions you might want to use. So I went ahead and did the project. Here are my questions that I came up with. How many times per week do you eat snack bars? Would you be more likely to buy a snack bar if it contains eight grams of fiber? Since that was one of my key parts that I, in my invented snack. What flavor of fruit bar do you prefer? Would you buy a fit and fruity snack bar from a vending machine? And would you consider, what would you consider to be a good price for one bar? So these are the questions I came up with. Again, this is not too hard. All you have to do is come up with five questions that you could ask someone about your product. Step two, now you're going to gather results. So you're going to actually ask 10 people, okay, 10 people, okay. Here are some options they give you. You can either write them on paper and interview people in person. You can call people on the phone that you know and ask them. And then there's these two techie ways to do it. <laughs> you can either make a survey monkey survey and send it to people and get responses, or there is a poll you can do on your cell phone. Okay, um, those are up to you. Um, I just decided I'll just call people I know and ask them. So my choice for this step, just call people, ask them the answers to the questions. Okay, step three, you're again gathering results. You need to ask at least 10 people the survey questions. You can, and then display your responses. You can do that in a Word document. You can do it at a PowerPoint. You can do it in a spreadsheet, a video, or if there's some other format you would like, just let me know and let me approve it. My choice, since I'm most comfortable with it, was to use PowerPoint to show the results of my questions. So that is what I did, was used PowerPoint. And here's what mine looked like. So I, in PowerPoint, did one question at a time and showed my results. So question one, how many times per week do you eat snack bars? I had asked 10 people, so the number of times, one person ate zero times a week, um, um, three people ate it once a week, 
two people ate it twice a week, one ate three times a week, one ate four times a week. Um, then there were these people that ate it six and seven times a week. So I did one slide each in PowerPoint for each question. Okay. And then so you can kind of see what my results looked like and how I displayed them. Okay, here's my would you be more likely? Here's a yes and no. Okay. Would you be more likely to bite if it had eight grams of fiber? Six per six people said yes, four said no. Um, and I forgot to change ooh, bad teacher. <laughs> forgot to change my numbers there. Question four, what flavor do you prefer? So here's my responses for my flavors. Um would you buy it in a vending machine? Eight people said yes, two said no. Um, and here, again, I forgot to change my question number here. Um, what would you consider to be a reasonable price? 50, 75, a dollar, dollar 25, a dollar 50, and here's the number of people that thought each of those was reasonable. Okay, so that's how I chose to show my survey results, and that is what you would submit to me as the teacher if you did it in a PowerPoint. Turn in the PowerPoint with the results of your survey, what your questions were, and what the responses were from the people you asked. You, again, you can do it in PowerPoint, you can do it in Word, you can do it as an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, so again, so your final step is to upload and submit your survey results when you reach the end of Lesson 20.